Hello everyone, it's my pleasure to welcome you all to this webinar on Elmo Informatics. Before getting into the further, I would like to introduce myself. I am Dr. Elmo Kumar, working as Assistant Professor in School of Life Sciences, PSA Crescent Institute of Science and Technology. So the content of this webinar will be, first I will be introducing about this topic, then I will be detailing about the applications of the Elmo Informatics. Then we will be coming up with the proper energy mechanism. Then, based on that, we will be seeing how a software is built based upon this energy mechanism. Then, we will be seeing about a biotech company which is working on this field or different platforms. Finally, we will end this with a future project. As the name implies, it's going to be the combination of immunology as well as the informatics. So it involves applications of various computational methods to the immunological challenges. So the immune system is going to be highly diverse because it comprises of various organs as well as the cells. But because is that if there is a non-self component, if it gets into the body, then these cells is going to recognize it and simultaneously several pathways is going to be activated. So this is going to be at the cellular level as well as the molecular level. So this kind of interaction is going to be the networks. That means if it one, if it affects the other one, then simultaneously it is going to act in a network function. Therefore, if we have an appropriate use of this informatic techniques, then we can improve this efficacy of this immunological research. Thereby, this application is going to be massive. Moving to the applications of immunoinformatics, the first one it will be on this vaccine design. Then immunoinformatics can also be applied for this immunotherapy where we can use this to treat a diseased person. By using this allergy prediction method, we can make a trace of the database which is being available where we can predict the characteristics of the allergen. It can also be applied for the cancer diagnostics as well as the therapy based upon this cancer biomarker which is available in the database. Then by applying this computational methods, we can develop this immune system models where we can figure out several problems and then we can also solve them simultaneously. Then we can improve the outcome of this transportation, particularly your organ based transportation. The first application on this vaccine design. So for a long time this B cell and T cell epitos are in the focus in the developing this uh, in predicting this epitopes. So the epitopes are nothing but it's a short amino acid sequence that are present in this pathogen. So normally we have a protein. So in this protein, this epitope it will be in the n number. So among this different n number of this epitope, we need to choose a particular epitope which induces the specific immune response against this pathogen. So we need to have a specific immune response against a pathogen. In addition to that, it also needs to be potent enough. So only if a bit of if, if it satisfies both these criteria, that will be suitable to incorporate in the vaccine. So this kind of epitope, if it possesses both these characteristics, then we call them as an immunogenic epitope. So in order to identify this immunogenic epitope, the two methods can be generally followed. The first one is going to be on this in vitro models, where we will be culturing this antigen presenting cells, such as your dendritic cells. You will be putting in this culture and then you will be growing it. Then you need to add this peptide manually. That means the peptide it needs to be produced by synthetic manner and then it needs to be added to this in vitro cultures and then it might be checked using a flow cytometry and other methods. The other possibility will be based upon this in situ co-productions where we will be having sequence amount of the immunodromatic tools based upon which we can determine this immunogenic epitopes. Now we are going to see a specific example in this development of this particular software. 
square which is being which is useful to predict this particular immunogenic epitopes. For that we need to understand this immunogenic mechanisms where this antigen processing and presentation which happens inside your dendritic cells. So normally we can classify into class 1 hemoc one pathway as well as your class 2 hemoc C pathway. In terms of your hemoc one pathway, so you are it's going to present your antigen to the cytotoxic T cell, which is your CD8 positive T cells. Whereas in case of your hemoc C2 pathway, it's going to activate your CD4 CD4 helper T cells. So this is a major difference. But if we look at this molecular level, when the protein, if it enters into the cytoplasm, it's going to be processed by the proteasome, and then it will be loaded to your MHC1 molecule and then only it will be presented to your CD8 T cells. Whereas in case of your MHC2 pathway, it's going to be stay back in the vesicle and then it will be loaded to your MHC2 pathway and then only it will be presented to your helper T cells. So this is the basic difference. If this protein if it exists in the cytoplasm, it will be processed by the proteasome and then it will be added to your MHC1. If it stays back in the vesicle, then it's going to be processed in the hemoc2 and then it's going to be presented to a helper T cells. So in order to predict this epitopes, we need to have a particular software. So based upon this immunogenic mechanism, sequence of softwares are being developed. The first one is going to be a FRAP predict, Proteo SMM, FRAP Pro C, Hep Cleavage. So these are all developed based upon this in vitro proteasome digestion data, which is done by the two proteins. One is going to be a beta cancer, and second one is going to be an enolase. Whereas your NetShop 20S and Proteo SMM, which is going to be the advanced version and compared to the previous version. So this is also utilize the data on this in vitro proteins of the deep digestion whereas in previous cases they have only two whereas in this case they had this more number of your protein that means your prion protein is going to be the additional one when comparing to the previous case then the third one is going to be a net chop C term so this is going to be based upon this in vivo so these are this data from which it's derived in company besides this different data sets the computational techniques which are being applied to construct these predictors it's going to be different for example in case of a proteo smm it's going to utilize a stabilized matrix method whereas in case of a net shop it's going to utilize a neural network so this is how your software is developed by utilizing your neurological mechanism and then they had the set of data through which they develop this predictor so that when you have this pathogen with a particular protein if you give that sequence then it's going to see how the proteasome it's going to process your particular protein into smaller segments of your peptides through which you will be able to predict this characteristics of the epitope. However, it needs to undergo several other steps in order to make sure that this particular epitope it binds with this MHC1 molecule more effectively. So this is going to be a startup one in addition to that several steps it needs to be done. So Evaxon is going to be a biotech company which is in Denmark so where they are applying this uh, you know technique where they have developed this intelligent vaccine design so it may utilize of your artificial intelligence along with your big data through which if you give this sequence within a day you can select a particular epitope through which you can formulate a vaccine and then your final results it will be available in the day 60 itself. So based upon this technology, they have uh, developed this hidden core technology. That means you can skip this traditional method. So that means this vaccine it can be developed very faster. Based upon this, they developed this vaccine against this antimicrobial resistance pathogens.
the one, the one which is highly protective which going to be your MRSA that is here methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus as we know like many of these research units around the world they are working on this antimicrobial resistance so this is going to be one of the strategy where they develop this vaccine against your antimicrobial resistance pathogen in addition to this antimicrobial resistance they also develop several Three clinical several vaccines are in two clinical stages. Few of them is going to be Cambyssil pneumonia and the Acetobacter pneumonia and Pseudomonas aureus. And some several other pathogens are being under development. In addition to this pathogen, they are also working on this immune oncology platform. So where they develop this personalized cancer immunotherapies. So where they be predicting this new epitopes. So as we saw before, epitopes is going to be a smaller fragments of the amino acids. Whereas in case of a new epitopes, it's going to be tumor specific mutated sequence which specifically binds to a MSC component. So that the particular T cell response it can be induced in the particular patient. So through which they newly identify the new epitopes, through which they develop the therapeutic immunization strategies, thereby they deliver to this particular patient so that the immune response is being induced in the patient and then this protected against a particular disease. To summarize, like this management and analysis of the immunological data plays a major role in the informatics. Neuromatics tools which are available now or available for allergies, infectious diseases, immune system functions, vaccine design and cancer. So now we have several next generation sequence method whereby we have more number of this information which is being available. So if we can do it properly and then if we have this more advanced tool means then we can Apply this thing in order to understand the immune system much more better and then the applications of the applications will be much more higher compared to the system method.